I am Lucia Sevidanis and I am an associate professor at the orthodontic and pediatric dentistry department at the University of Michigan. We are very thankful to the American Association of Orthodontics uh, for their support for our project on integrative predictors of temporomandibular joint osteoarthritis. The dysfunctions of the temporomandibular joint often involve um, different imaging manifestations as well as clinical symptoms for the patients. And many times the clinical symptoms do not correspond to the differences that we see um, in imaging scans. For this reason, this project proposes to integrate clinical symptoms, levels of different pro-inflammatory markers measured in blood and saliva, as well as high-resolution combined CT imaging of the temporomandibular joint in a longitudinal assessment that will allow us to then quantify the changes and correlate them to clinical symptoms. As an orthodontic clinician, we record the patient's clinical symptoms regarding their temporomandibular joints, but oftentimes the pain duration or pain intensity does not correspond to the structural changes that we see in the bone or in the articular disc. Condim CT allow us to do a very careful three-dimensional assessment of the images, and this project proposes to integrate this 3D assessment at a thousand and two points in the 3D meshes with both clinical symptoms and levels of flow inflammatory proteins. This image this depicts color-coded maps of the correlations between a certain pro-inflammatory marker with the articular surface of the condyle, as well as correlations of the pain duration for that patient. Our group has developed uh, pilot studies on uploading this clinical, biological, and imaging data into a secure website using the database Interactor, which then allow us to do advanced shape statistical analysis um, to establish the correlations with clinical and biological parameters and determine their correlations with the 1,002 points in the surface meshes. The funding of the American Association of Orthodontics Foundation will allow us to collect longitudinal data to test a deep learning neural network that performs classification based on features that are not only imaging features but clinical and biological features as well as train such deep learning neural network towards a final model of prediction of how severe the disease is. This assessment is performed in a secure shell in an advanced core, computing core at the University of Michigan. A review of the clinical presentation of arthritis of the TMJ emphasizes that the bone changes in the mandibular condyles are more prominent than in the long bones because in the long bones, the condyles are covered by a thick layer of hyaline cartilage, while in the temporomandibular joint, only a thin layer of fibrocartilage covers the, con the mandibular condyles. At baseline of a patient, the patient already presents oftentimes with condylar flattening, and in a one-year follow-up that we'll be doing in this project, we often see continuation and progression of those uh, changes that happen in certain areas of the condyles, and we will assess then both the location and the magnitude of those changes in the one-year follow-up. From a clinical perspective, such degenerative conditions in the condyles will lead to marked facial changes as seen in the bottom row, comparing the facial changes on a patient pre-puberty and at baseline diagnosis how much his profile had changed because of the degenerative condition in the condyle. Looking at cross-sections of a condym CT 
we can see different stages of condylar degeneration from an initial stage in a very minor surface erosion and loss of structure in the subchondral bone to progressive subchondral cysts and um, some erosions of the articular surface that then progress to marked internal bone destruction um, with complete flattening of the articular surface as shown in the last image. But the individual variability is such that in some patients even degenerative conditions can present um, with reparative changes. In this patient, the condyle presented with incipient inflammation on one side, but on the other side, the generation was more severe, and the condyle decided to perform bilateral condylectomy. After resection of the condyle, as shown in this image, the presence of inflammation and regenerative um, remodeling led to regrowth of the condyle. This um, image is shown one year after condylectomy and three years after the condylectomy, the condylar structures have almost uh, completely formed again. One important aspect of this project is that we are now using not large field of view condensed CTs, but localized images of the temporomandibular joint that allow us to assess not only the surface meshes, but also the internal trabecular study and assess with color-coded maps the variability in the subchondral structure, which may be an important marker of initial stages of the disease. And to integrate those initial stages in a longitudinal assessment, we will test whether these um, saliva and plasma markers are surrogate predictors together with clinical symptoms of the characteristic flattening of the lateral pole and loss of articular surface that we see in OA patients, as shown in white, compared to control subjects as shown in transparent pink in this overlay image. We are confident that at completion of this result, these findings will lead to very interesting studies that we look forward to sharing with you.